um, as I said before, odds is a really odd thing. Um, again, if you, if you speak language, think if there's any word you can think of for odds. And if you think again, you'll see that it's the word for chance or for probability. There's no word for odds in any other language. Nothing. Nothing. Very interesting. Okay, so now let's look at odds. And the next thing I want to do is just a little bit of practice to move more easily between these odds, probability, and logic. Okay? Since we're going through these three steps of transformation, I want to feel more comfortable. I want you to feel more comfortable going between them. If I give you the odds, can you compute the probability? If I give you the probability, can you compute the logit? And the reason is that the model that you will get will, will give you a logit on the other side, but a logit is kind of, how do you interpret that? It means nothing. So we want to know how to take that and bring it back into odds, or if you have the odds, bring them back into probability. And that's an operation that you will have to do because the software won't spit out all three. Okay? All right, so let's see how we move between things. So remember, I already showed you some stuff. This, this is the math. So I'll just give you a few other helpful, I'll just shift things around. I'll say, OK, so if I know the odds, what is the probability? Or if I know the probability, here. So here's the question. If someone gives you the odds of the event, how do I obtain the probability from there? I'm just going to take that formula that I showed you a second ago, and I'm going to change it around. And it turns out that this is what it's going to be. So if you give me the odds, this W, I'm just going to plug W over 1 plus W, and that will give me the probability. Okay, if you say the odds are, I don't know, 5, then I'll plug in 5 over 6 and 5, 6. Okay, so that's a useful thing to do. If you give me the logit, which is what the output would fit, right? You plug in all the x's and you get a logit, and I want the odds, then since the logit is just the log odds, all I need to do is to take an exponent. And actually, you'll see that the software some software, um, Excel Miner does, will give you the logits and the odds. So you'll have both of them. You won't have to take it yourself. You can kind of browse them. And that's useful because when you're interpreting, you don't want to start doing calculations. And, okay? So that's useful. And finally, if you give me the logit and I want to compute the probability, I want to kind of backtrack two steps, then it turns out that this is going to work. You can either use this or that. That's easier. But if you give me the logit, I take a negative of that logit, take an exponent, do this little function, and you probability of an event. Now, what I want you to notice from here, besides that there's you know, just a little arithmetic to do when you're moving between things, is that all these functions are nonlinear of each other, right? The probability, the odds, and the log odds, none of them are a linear function, one of the other. They're all nonlinear. You either take an exponent or one over, or stuff like that. And the, the, what, what this means is that whatever you can interpret, like we did in linear regression, we say a unit increase in the x1 is, phi, is beta units in the y. That won't translate easily. If it works on logs, that, trans that translation or that interpretation won't work on the log odds, and that won't work. Sentence that you make on one of them won't be the same sentence that you can carry over to the others, because it's not a linear operation. Okay. Moreover, because we're building the log odds, the logit, this thing is going to be on the left-hand side, then the effect of the predictors is going to be linear on the logit, right? Because we put the logit on the other side. But it's not going to be linear on the odds, and it's not going to be linear on the probability. And what that means, translated into actual right, results, is that let's say if I have income on the left, right? Income is my predictor and beer preference is, is my y variable. Then I can say, well, income has a linear effect on the logit. As the income increases unit by unit, the logit increases unit by unit, right? Or jumps by jump. But it means that the effect of income is linear on the odds of preferring light beer. And that it's not linear in the probability. So the probability doesn't have equal jumps when you increase the income by equal jumps. So it's going to be very hard. We won't be able to interpret in terms of probability. We will be in, in uh, it will be possible to interpret in terms of, of odds and logic. And that's where we're going. Okay, so that's why I'm trying to explain to you why I care about these things. It's just because things won't, won't work as simple as they were before. We need to understand the three. Okay, so here's that model. And you'll notice that it's nonlinear. Because if you think of the original y in here, right, it's a nonlinear function of the y. And we're building a nonlinear relationship between y and the different. Okay? 
So the regression is linear in logit, but who cares about logit? Who even knows what a logit is? What I care about is that it is not linear in that probability or in the original y or whatever you want to call it. Right? You saw it has this S shape if you want to look at the y. Now, the good part about this is that the reason, the, the fact that we use this odds transformation is not only because it works nicely, but it also has a very nice interpretation. Okay, so we didn't just do a transformation that works nicely in terms of producing predictions in the whole range of negative infinity to infinity, because you could have thought of lots of other functions. What's nice about the odds is that we do have an interpretation when we want to use it for explanation. And in particular, the way it was, remember that the logit is just the log of the odds? The log of the odds. So if I take an exponent on both sides, I get the odds on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, I get an exponent of all that stuff. Right? Is this okay? All I did was I, take, I took an exponent on both sides. And since log, lo, the log did is log of odds, I get back the odds. Okay, so look at what I have. I have the odds are an exponent of the, the predictor. So what this is telling me is that because of this nice relationship between the predictors and odds that have, are built in here, I can interpret a unit increase in marital status. Well, that doesn't mean anything. A, a unit increase in income or a unit increase in age. And that will say something about how the odds grow. And they're going to be growing um, in a multiplicative way. Before I actually get into the details, let me just show you one last step. Here is how I write it as a function of the logit. Here I took an exponent. And finally, if you want to see what it's going to look like if I have a probability on the left side, if I want to replace this thing with a probability, it looks really ugly. So this is the relationship between the probability of y equals 1, probability of preferring light beer, and the predictors. And you see that it's highly nonlinear. Right? This is a relationship that's very, very nonlinear. That's that S curve in multi multiple dimensions. If you only took one of these predictors, if you only had income in here and you drew it, it would, it would kind of look like that. All right? So again, the catch is that we won't be able to say things like a unit increase in income ha increases the probability of preferring light beer by, I don't know, 0 0.3. You can't say that. Because it's not, it depends on which income level you're talking about. If you're moving from 20,000 to 30,000, or from 100,000 to 110,000, it's going to have a different effect. Okay, so we can't make big statements that are on constant increases in income or whatever it is. And that's the catch in sense. That's why we work in the odds right there. The point is, again, that we're not fitting a linear line between the predictors and the outcome. We're fitting these S-shaped curves, also called a sigmoidal function, if you ever see it. Um, if you ever dig into neural nets, you'll see that sometimes you can choose a type of sigmoidal function. Um, so it's, it's not just a function using linguistic regression. It's using a bunch of data mining methods. 